Hey YouTube! Today's build log is going to be about this magnetic levitation desk toy. It's being built as a Christmas gift for uh, someone I know. Um, inside, under the hood, there is this cheap little AliExpress um, magnetic levitation kit. Instructions were kind of spotty and I had to go to a kind of dodgy website to get everything to figure out and reverse engineer the instructions. Because um, they weren't translated into English either, so, you know, builder beware. Either way, I built the module inside, and then I whipped up this quick, quick little um, uh, outer box here, and really, I'm going to finish it off now. You can pick up this kit for yourself on AliExpress for about 20 to 30 bucks US, different flavors for different weight capacities. Comes in an anti-static bag, parts sorted out in little Ziploc baggies. You can take your neodymium magnets and set them aside to avoid getting ferromagnetic junk stuck to them, like iron filings on your workbench. The pre-wound electromagnets on iron or steel cores seem pretty nice, and you have two PCBs, mostly through-hole with a little bit of surface mount that you'll need to be prepared for. Always sort your components because knolling is both therapeutic and productive. It makes it easier to find your components afterwards. For the driver circuit board of this kit, assembly was straightforward. You populate all your passive through-hole components, resistors and capacitors, then move on to taller components such as electrolytic caps, voltage regulator, and finish it off with actives such as the transistors and op amps. Main difficulty is work holding a circular PCB. Fortunately I have third hand add-on for my Panavice. My main gripe with this kit however is surface mount components. You're only given the exact number. Their cost is fractions of a penny. Why cheap out? You lose one SMT LED and you're screwed, like what happened here. Oh, that's not good. Once you've finished losing surface mount components to the ether, then you can populate the headers and jumpers, followed by the electromagnet coils. Once you have the first coil installed, then you have to manually adjust and align painstakingly the three analog hull sensors, the X, the Y, and here we have the Z axis being manually aligned with a straight edge, in this case just a spare piece of header. Very finicky, but once you have that done, you can install the rest of the coils. Would have been nice if it was a daughter board assembly that didn't require so much alignment, but it is what it is. After installing the electromagnets which provide the control force and the Hall effect sensors which form the feedback loop, you finish off this board with the neodymium magnets which provide the actual levitation force. Once you mate the driver and electromagnet PCBs together, then you need to calibrate. Measure the analog voltages at the Hall effect sensors and compare them to the set points that are fed to the op amps. Once you get the two adjusted, you're good to go. All right, so move the camera a little bit in closer and we can take a look at what's under the hood. Um, I've disconnected the fan for now, which should be fine. This is the little magnetic levitation toy inside. Um, it works okay, except for when you get the magnet off center and then it crashes into one of the four sets of neodymium magnets on the outside. So on its own, it's not really suited for um, constant use. It's more of a novelty. But with this little case I designed, it protects the soft squishy bits on the inside. These coils aren't the greatest in terms of design. They cut the leads a little too short. Um, and you can see some of these are kind of at a bit of a janky angle. Um, but otherwise, the kit itself does exactly what it's advertised to. Um, this case is just a little snap fit design. Um, because in case something happens, I'd want to be able to just pop it open and take a look under the hood. So inside, we've got the magnetic levitation toy. I've got a small little fan that I'm going to adhere using VHB tape, and I'm going to have a rocker switch and power socket on the back. Let's crack this open and let's dive into it. That's the underside. Some of these transistors do get a little warm, but not terrifyingly so. so what we're going to need to do is rip all the guts out and start from the beginning. I've got my power socket here. I'm going to have to wire the power socket to the switch. Uh, I'm going to have to get a small 5 volt regulator for the fan and I'm also going to adhere this fan into place. Um, I think I'm going to actually install the fan in place now um, with VHB tape. So I'm just adhering it directly to the fan and just snip it right off and we should be good to go.
Yep, that should be good enough for my purposes. I designed these little um, ledges inside as uh, landing recognition points to uh, center the fan appropriately. I gave it a little bit of um, slack, not slack, extra space on the sides just so it's a good fit. And in case the fan I have needs to be replaced, there's a little bit of tolerance to accept a slightly different uh, 40 millimeter fan. With the fan in place, time to take care of power routing inside this unit. Tack on some extra wires so we don't need to deal with the DC barrel jack on the levitator module, and we'll actually prep the DC barrel jack for power input to this unit. Let's take a second to appreciate these nice, clean, crisp shots from the new camera setup and how badly I need a new soldering iron tip. We'll install the DC barrel jack, rocker switch, and hardwired all in place to make sure it's service free. One of the last steps was to deal with the voltage regulator. Now at this stage, I was in a rush and I just decided to cheat using insulation displacement connectors. They're great for joining dissimilar metals, dissimilar conductor sizes, have a dielectric grease, and are great for weather resistance. So instead of dead bugging this with solder and bypass caps, which would have taken at least quite some time to get right, I decided to just cheat this and hook up <laughs> my 7805 with a couple of uh, IDC splices and away we go. Small splash of solder and heat shrink later and I had a decent looking package. Oh wait, that wasn't the idea. Have I gone and made myself something accidentally phallic? With the voltage regulator complete, all that was really left to do was clean up the wiring with some quick crimp splices and then bring up the circuit. This is always a good idea, incrementally bring up your circuits just to make sure everything functions correctly. So apply power and fan should come on. Bring on the levitator, fan's running. And the levitator levitates. Now by this stage, all I needed to do was mount the levitator module in and unceremoniously stuff the wires in. At this point, I just needed to be done with this project because I had more Christmas gifts to make in the same weekend. So no points for beauty, but it works. So here we have the finished product. It's a uh, three printed case with a little magnetic levitation device inside. Got some air intake holes in the front, uh, an exhaust on the back for a 40 millimeter fan. Fan is running 5 volts, it's designed for 12 volts, so by running at a lower voltage, it uh, runs a good deal quieter. Power switch and a DC plug, uh, nice and clean, slight taper on the case. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but it is ever so slightly tapered by a couple degrees. Um, just for a more kind of pleasing design on the desk. Um, but other than that, you can put whatever you want up on this piece, and that's going to be up to the recipient of this gift. When I give it to them, um, they're going to decide what they want to put on here. But uh, yeah, that's about it for this project. Um, all told, maybe about a day. Printed the case um, overnight, but uh, spent about half an hour designing this, and uh, built the innards cram them all in here and away we go. The only thing that I'm missing of course is rubber feet. I can't find them so I'll uh, slap those on at the last possible second before delivering said gift. But uh, yeah, if you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell. Remember the algorithm owns your life. Um, so other than that, peace out.